9 o'clock worship service. Our services are also on the zionhamilton.org website. Our service today is led by Pastor John Minnemeyer and Vicar Patty Eaton. Our music today will be by Barb Johnson, and the lector is Sonia Smith. If you are in need of prayer or want to have our weekly service bulletin emailed to you, please contact our church office at 513-863-5774 or email us at zionlutheranoffice at gmail.com. Today's service will include a temple talk by Chris Parker of Vernal Home. And today we have a vocal solo sung by Richard Ruby called How Lovely Are Thy Dwellings. We now begin with our prelude. Test your memory relative to the bishop's visit on the uh, 180th anniversary. Jesus loves you. I care about you. And then Jesus, Jesus loves, loves you. you. And what was her instruction that day? This would be the third week, the third time. So you're to find somebody to share that with outside of the, outside of the church premises. So uh, keep that in mind for your mission statement this week. Uh, Jesus loves you. We care about you. Jesus loves you. Uh, I won't do the spoiler alert, but uh, wait till you see the uh, little bit of an encounter that I had, and I wrote about it in the newsletter, and the newsletter should be out this week. So uh, I'll, let you, I'll let you read that story at that time. So welcome this morning. Julia, we welcome you. And uh, Chris Parker, we welcome you from Wernley Homes over in Richmond, Indiana. Um, somebody here found a bulletin that dated back more than a hundred years and Wernley Home was uh, already uh, mentioned in that. So Zion has a long history of support for uh, Wernley. So we'll hear our temple talk and then we'll do something a little different with the kids. Uh, we're going to do a noisy offering today. I know I didn't give you advance notice on that, but uh, change any change in your pocket or your purse and of course paper money is welcome too. So uh, we'll do that, and we'll uh, let the kids do the jingling uh, with the cans wherever I put my cans at. Now i got to see where oh, I, I think, I think they're still in the back, uh, so I've got to go get those. Uh, Andrew Copas is home this, uh, this weekend, and we're actually hoping to see him. So uh, keep, keep your eyes peeled just in case they roll in yet uh, this morning. Um, I don't know that there are other announcements that need to be made, but Patty might know of others since she was ready to go this morning. Um, but uh, I'll give you the chance. I'll take the noisy cans. and We welcome Barb Johnson as our organist today. And hi, Barb. <laughs> Yay, Barb. The women of Zion are having a planning session after wor worship today, and all women are welcome. And remember that September 10th is Rally Day. Sunday school starts in the morning, catechism at 6 o'clock that evening. And that's also God work, God's work, Our Hands, Sunday. Now please join me in preparing for worship by listening to the prelude.
Now our preparation leads us to the order for confession and forgiveness as we prepare to come to our Lord's table of grace today. Will you stand and join with me there? Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who greets us in this and every season, whose word never fails, whose promise is sure. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of our neighbors. You may choose to kneel at this time. Merciful God, we confess that we have sinned, we have hurt our community, we have squandered your blessings, we have hoarded your bounty. In the name of Jesus, forgive us and grant us your mercy. Righteous God, we confess that we have sinned, we have failed to be honest, we have lacked the courage to speak, we have spoken falsely. In the name of Jesus, forgive us and grant us your mercy. God is a cup of cold water when we thirst. God offers boundless grace when we fail. Claim the gift of God's mercy. You are freed and forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. We stand to sing, O Holy Spirit, enter in.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, with all your faithful followers of every age, we praise you, the rock of our life. Be our strong foundation and form us into the body of your Son, that we may gladly minister to all the world. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let's be seated. I want you to know that Patty's very serious today. She's got a timeout chair here for anybody who falls asleep during the temple talk or the sermon today. Chris Parker is the director of church relations at Wernley Home over in Richmond, Indiana. So we welcome him. I invited him to lunch afterwards. He and he informed me he'd made a promise to his wife. I guess you made a promise 35 years ago. Uh, it's his 35th wedding anniversary, and he promised her dinner. So uh, I'm I'm not offended. Chris, welcome. Faith United Lutheran, right in Richmond. Uh, I was in Middletown at uh, Bethlehem a few weeks ago, and I was telling this story after the service um, about how 
anxious I got the first year doing this and how nervous I got before I got up and spoke. And finally, my wife had said, what are you so afraid of? Are you worried you're going to get beat up by a gang of Lutherans? And so I to I'm telling this story, and when I said that, a little lady with a cane tapped me on the foot and said, never say never. So there you go. Um, Wormley's been there uh, for 144 years. It was started by the Indiana Ohio Synod uh, in 1879. It uh, existed as an orphanage for almost 100 years. And now it's evolved into a place where kids come that have been removed from their homes due to abuse, neglect, uh, or some other childhood trauma, and sometimes behavior as a result of that trauma. Uh, they typically stay there for uh, about a year is the average time they stay there, and they will either go back to their homes if it's safe at that point, or foster care or whatever uh, uh, that is arranged for them. Um, the kids are 13 through 18. There's boys and girls, and uh, it, it's tough stuff. And you guys, as Pastor mentioned, uh, have, have been supporters for a long time, and I know that some of you still individually support Wernley, so thank you for that. Um, a few weeks or several weeks ago, we had an on-campus service, and we had uh, 87 Lutherans from 12 different congregations, uh, five pastors and a vicar. I love that we had a vicar. And... Uh, and it was just a wonderful experience. The kids ate dinner with us and uh, attended the service, and it was, uh, it was uplifting. The reason I'm telling you that is that we're going to do it again next year, and uh, I'm going to make sure everybody knows about it. And I hope a couple people from every congregation uh, can make it. It's just about an hour up the road. Um, as always, uh, in my temple talks, I tell a story about a, a child that's at Wormley, so you can get kind of a, an idea of, of what we're dealing with. Um, let me start this by saying this young lady's parents are in prison, so you know it's not going to be a good story. When she was 12 years old, her own parents trafficked their daughter, okay? Sent her on dates with men uh, for money. It was found out, and uh, she was removed, obviously, from her home. And the only family member willing to step up and take her was her mom, biological mom's brother. So she goes to live with her un uncle and aunt. Well, there's a cousin there that's two years older than her, and it's not long that he inflicts the same abuse on her that her parents had set her up for. She goes and tells his mom, and she says, well, you ungrateful, and just lets her have it. You had nothing. We brought you here. This child has no chance at this point. It happens again, she tells the mom again, and the mom just, it, it blows up into a fight, and uh, eventually it was proven that he did do it, but she ended up at Wernley because of this. And uh, the first couple weeks, she didn't even get out of bed. And we had a back-to-school bash last week. I did see her up and about on campus. Um, kids are resilient, but there's some tough stuff they go through, I tell you. Uh, I want to close with this. Um, when you donate to Wernley, it's not going bouncing around anywhere. Wernley is Wernley. It's not a division of Humana Health or a partner with Francisco. It's Wernley. When you donate to Wernley, it's coming to those 80 acres, and it's not leaving. So thank you for this opportunity. Pastor, it was great to see you again. I visited him up in Zion a few years ago. And uh, thank you for, uh, for letting me do this today. And uh, I'll be out back if you have any questions after church. Thank you. And Chris does have a table set up in the Great Hall um, with a, a number of informational pieces for you. Good morning. The first lesson is Isaiah 51, 1 through 6. Just as God has called Abraham. Is this on? Okay, thank you. <laughs> I'm trying. Just as God had called Abraham and Sarah and given them many descendants, so now God offers comfort to Zion. God's deliverance will come soon and will never end. Now is the reading. Listen to me, you that pursue righteousness, you that seek the Lord. 
Look to the rock from which you were hewn, and to the quarry from which you were dug. Look to Abraham, your father, and to Sarah, who bore you. For he was but one when I called him, but I blessed him and made him many. For the Lord will comfort Zion. He will comfort all her waste places and will make her wilderness like Eden, her desert like the garden of the Lord. Joy and gladness will be found in her, thanksgiving and the voice of song. Listen to me, my people, and give heed to me, my nation. For a teaching will go out from me, and from my justice for a light to the peoples. I will bring near my deliverance swiftly. My salvation has gone out, and my arms will rule the peoples. The coastlands wait for me, and for my arm they hope. Lift up your eyes to the heavens, and look at the earth beneath. For the heavens will vanish like smoke, and earth will wear out like a garment. And those who live on it will die like gnats. But my salvation will be forever, and my deliverance will never be ended. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. We will now read responsibly uh, Psalm 138. I will give thanks to you, O Lord, with my whole heart. Before the gods I will sing your praise. I will bow down toward your holy temple and praise your name because of your steadfast love and faithfulness. For you have glorified your name and your word above all things. When I called, you answered me. Increased my strength within me. All the rulers of the earth will praise you, O O Lord. When they have heard the words of your mouth. They will sing the ways of the Lord. That great is the glory of the Lord. The Lord is high, yet cares for the lowly. Perceiving the haughty from afar. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you keep me safe. You stretch forth your hand against the fury of my enemies. Your right hand shall save me. You will make good your purpose for me. O Lord, your steadfast love endures forever. Do not abandon the works of your hands. The second lesson is Romans 12, 1 through 8. In response to God's merciful activity, we are to worship by living holistic, God-pleasing lives. Our values and viewpoints are not molded by the time in which we live, but are transformed by the Spirit's renewing work. God's grace empowers different forms of service among Christians, but all forms of ministry function to build up the body of Christ. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world but be transformed by the renewing of your minds so that you may discern all, discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think of yourself more highly than you ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. For as in one who are many, as for one body, we have many members, and not all the members have the same function. So we, who are many, are one body in Christ, and individually we are members one of another. We have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, prophecy, in proportion to faith, ministry in ministering, the teacher in teaching, the exhorter in exhortation, the giver in generosity, the leader in diligence, the compassionate in cheerfulness. Word of God, word of life. Thanks Thanks be to God.
the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 16th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. At a climactic point in Jesus' ministry, God reveals to Peter that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And Jesus responds with the promise of a church that will overcome the very gates of Hades. Now when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say that the Son of Man is? And they said, Some say John the Baptist, but others Elijah, and still others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on the earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on the earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he sternly ordered the disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. The Holy Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Okay, would the children come forward, please, and sit on the first step. And this chair, indeed, is not a timeout chair. <laughs> this chair is for the old lady who's going to tell you a story, who can't sit on the steps because I can't get up. So, I'm going to sit over here. All right. How is everybody this morning? Good. <laughs> Whoa. How is everybody this morning? Okay. <laughs> well, in the reading that we heard from Romans, we heard that we all have different gifts according to the grace given us. Who gives us those gifts? Jesus. God gives us gifts. So I'm going to tell you a little story. Now when I was a child, my mother said when I would start a story, instead of once upon a time, I would say punsa time. I think it was probably like three. So punsa time, there was an apple tree which God had created. It was a young tree without any leaves or fruit. One night, the young tree saw the brilliant stars and was very unhappy. He wished for himself to have these, these, spring, these sparkling stars on his branches so that he too would be beautiful. The next morning, God noticed that the tree was unhappy and he said to him, let me make something for you. I will dress you up in a beautiful mantle of green so that you will be beautiful to behold. Then you will not be so unhappy. But the tree was not content with God's plan. I do not want a mantle of green. I want stars. The next morning the tree saw that God had not given him stars but green leaves. And the tree frowned upon it. Once again, the tree said to God, I want stars. But instead, God gave him beautiful red fruit. The tree was even more unhappy. The wind saw how unhappy the apple tree was, and the wind became unhappy too. The wind blew and tried to set the apple tree free of the leaves and the fruit, but he failed. However, as the wind blew, some of the leaves and fruit fell to the ground. One apple broke into two pieces right in the middle. When the tree looked upon the broken apple, guess what he saw? Julia, could you help me please? Give one of these to each of you, please. Now look at that picture of the apple broken. What is right in the center of that apple? What does it look like? A star. 
So God did give him stars. They were just hidden. Now many times you and I, like the apple tree in the story, we want a special gift that God might have given to someone else. We may even try to give God's instructions as to what we want, like this apple tree did. We must remember that God gives each of us special gifts as he deems best, because he knows us the best. When we rejoice in the gifts he has given us and use them to do his work, then we will shine like the shiny stars in the sky. Would you pray with me? Father, help me to be content with the work that you do in me and to use the gifts which you give me to be a blessing to others. Amen. How many of you like apples? I asked my husband to get me a bag of apples and would you know he got me green ones. So I did not bring them because it wasn't a green apple, it was red. So next time you have an apple, have your mom slice it that way so you can see the stars. Thank you so much. Let's move this big old chair back here. Mercy, peace, and love be yours in abundance. That's from Jude, first chapter, verse 2. I want stars. I want stars. Did our apple tree sound like a recalcitrant child that you have ever known? <laughs> have you ever been that recalcitrant child? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I have. Now, I might not have always said it out loud, but in my mind and in my heart, I was probably thinking certain things like, why couldn't I cheer like Wanda and make the squad? I was the only one who tried out and didn't make it. I want to paint like Bob Ross. Why can't I sew as gorgeously as my mother could? I want to sing like those guest vocalists that Bill always brings to church. We must remember that God gives us each special gifts as he deems best. He's the finite planner and developer. If we all had the same gifts, there would be many areas within Christ's body that would be doing nothing. It would be unfilled. In verse 4 to 6 in the Romans reading today, it said, For as in one body we have many members, and not all the members have the same function. What about in our body, all the organs wanted to breathe? We couldn't do anything else but breathe. So we are, we are many, and we are one in the body of Christ. And individually, we are members one of another. We have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us. And then it goes on to name a few gifts. Pastor John has a gift that I hope someday I can develop. I don't know if I have it just yet, but he can stand before you and do a sermon without a paper. The bishop can't even do that. The bishop had her notes and used a paper. So I am in awe of Pastor John. It just flows out of him. You know it's a God-given talent, but I actually think it's in his DNA because he has so many pastors in his family. <laughs> so I think it's part of his cellular makeup. But I dare say that many of us have not discovered all of our God-given gifts yet. I am still discovering mine. I knew from a very young age that I wanted to be a nurse. I'm not sure why, but I knew, probably at the age of about six or seven, that I was going to be a nurse, and I was going to help all the sick people. And I doctored every toy we had in the house, every animal, every doll. Everybody that walked in the house, I would say, sit down, let me see if you're sick. So that was something that was in my makeup. It was a major part of my life for more than 40 years, and... It still is a major part of my life. I just do it a little differently now. Some of my gifts have run their season, and I'm not using them anymore. They were re replaced by newly discovered gifts. I found that finding my gifts from God were like peeling an onion, and every time I would take off one layer, lo and behold, there was another one for me to discover. When I started on my journey to become a pastor, 
I was asked repeatedly to describe my call, and I was warned that everybody's going to ask you this. So I thought, I better get my ducks in a row and figure this out. Because my call was not like a light bulb going off and, here you go, this is what I'm doing. It was first my understanding of God's word better and getting into the Bible. It was performing new services here in church, like reading the lessons, becoming a communion assistant. I then accepted a position on council. I then, <laughs> Kathy's laughing at me. <laughs> yeah, they roped me into that one, Kathy. <laughs> the eternal position on council. <laughs> Um, I then started reading the portals of prayer and God pause. That became an everyday event. I was put in the position of leading worship when our pastor was um, isolated due to COVID. And those first few services that I did, there was just something. It was like, whoa, what is this? You know, I would plan, I would prepare, but once I got up there, something took over. You know what that something is. What is that something, Laura? The spirit. The spirit took over and just, because then I would finish and people would say that was great. And I'm thinking, what did I say? <laughs> but then I started to attend the Synod Leadership Academy to study to become a lay minister. Because having been put in the position of having to run worship once, I knew it could happen again. And lo and behold, it did several times that year. So those were the stepping stones in my process. And... I think I still might have some gifts yet undiscovered as I go through this process. What about you? Do you think you have some God-given gifts you have not acknowledged yet? Sometimes they're glaring you right in the face and you can't see them. There is a spiritual gifts assessment tool on the ELCA website. I'm going to read you a paragraph from the article that I found. God has given each Christian two vitally important gifts. The first is the gift of faith in Jesus Christ, his work of redemption, and thus forgiveness of sin. The second is the gift of one or more special abilities, which are to be used for the purpose of unifying the body of Christ and for the growth of God's kingdom. These abilities are called spiritual gifts. Like other presents, it is impossible to fully appreciate and make use of our spiritual gifts until they have been opened. Now, when I receive a gift, I love wrapping, I love cards, and I will say, thank you, that was so lovely of you. I haven't even opened the gift yet. But just the fact that someone thought enough of me to buy me something and wrap it up and get me a card, that's what I'm thankful for. Whatever the gift is inside, I'm sure I'll love it. But it was the thought that really gets to my heart. On the women of the ELCA website, which we like to call Welka, you will find an article entitled, Gifts for You, Opening Your Spiritual Gifts. And one of the opening paragraphs fits in with my message today. God has given the body of Christ an awesome task in the Great Commission, which is in Matthew 28, and the Great Command, which is in Acts 1. Could you imagine approaching these tasks knowing that only you are working on them? They would be impossible. But with the body of Christ working together, we can obey God's command more fully than we could alone. Spiritual gifts are biblical, given to everyone. So when you see someone down on their luck, they have gifts to share. If you see someone who's not like you, they have gifts to share. They are essential to discipleship and exciting to discover and to reveal. But there's more to spiritual gifts. You cannot choose or trade gifts that you receive. Spiritual gifts are gifted through the work of the Holy Spirit. And spiritual gifts are not about you. God has a greater use for these gifts, and they are not exclusively for your edification. Remember Paul's words in verse 3 of Romans today. For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think of yourself more highly than you ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. 
as I look out, of, out at you this morning, some of you I know really well, and I could list your gifts quite easily. Others I don't know so well, and I'm still watching and looking to see what your gifts are. So what I'd like you to do is think about, have you accepted all of your gifts? Have you opened your gifts? Are you willing to use your gifts? So I will pray for that for you, and you pray for that for yourself as well. God has given you gifts and puts responsibilities before you to use them. Would you pray with me, please? Father God, please help me to see the gifts you have so graciously given to me. Help me to discern how to exercise my gifts in ways that best contribute to the body of Christ. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. I did not put the name of the sermon. What is the sermon? Somebody tell me. What is the hymn? Yes, I didn't put the name of the hymn on my paper here. Take my life. You know, I found one that was a little bit jazzier, but then Julia said to me, no, that's too, too jazzy. And then, of course, when Barb came in this morning, she said, I'm glad you chose this one. I really wanted the jazzier one. <laughs> the whole church in every time and place, let us confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, 
was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may now choose to kneel for the prayers. Confident that God receives our joys and concerns, let us offer our prayers for the church, those in need, and all of creation. God of Sarah and Abraham, inspire your church to pursue righteousness in its ministry. Equip us to share your compassion that unites us as one family of faith. This week we lift up Augsburg Lutheran Church in Cincinnati and North Fairfield Baptist Church in Fairfield Township. Hear us, O oh God. Remind us that from the beginning of creation you knit together a world meant for harmony. Protect and restore the wasted places to joy and gladness. We ask also that you comfort and strengthen those who, recovering, or who are recovering from natural disasters whether in Hawaii, Texas, California, or in Florida today. Hear us, O oh God. Stir the leaders of nations and towns, militaries and courts to respond to your teachings. Let your call for justice reach all people and bring deliverance where there is oppression. Hear us, O oh God. Show your steadfast love and faithfulness to those in despair. Increase their strength. Care for all who feel low. Keep safe any in the midst of trouble. And protect vulnerable and ill people from harm. Especially we lift before you today Patrice, Maggie, Martha, Larry, Margaret Ann, Wanda, Annie, Earl, Mike, Janice, Clay, Achilles, Joyce, Libby, Donna, Wayne, Cash, Chloe, Mary, Dennis, Loretta, Jim, Butch, Brock, Joyce, Larry Jones, Bob, Bob Beers, who is currently hospitalized, Nate, Marty, Manette, Glenn, CJ, Patty, Noah, Lee, Jace, Fred, Rob. And we give thanks today for a time of leave and rest for Captain Andrew Copas at home. We pray also for Karen Flaumer, who joins us in the radio audience this morning. Hear us, O oh God. Encourage those who offer their gifts and talents in service to your church. Energize this congregation's rostered and lay leaders, musicians, teachers, greeters, and administrators, so they may be transformed in sharing your grace. Hear us, O God. God of all the saints, death is overcome in Christ's resurrection. We rejoice with the faithfully departed. Sustain us in hope until we come at last to our heavenly home. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We give you thanks for those who now rest from their labors, especially Bernard of Clairvaux, whom the church commemorates today. Motivate us by their lives of dedication to the gospel until that day when we join with them in our eternal home. Hear us, O oh God. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. We've identified a couple visitors for you, and 
Sandy and, and Gertrude are back, so welcome them home for a time. I guess you've got to go back up and close up, though, in a few weeks, right? put those twins to work up here. That's peace. Where you are, that's peace. It's time to put Naomi and Gloria to work over here. So, uh, uh, which one wants this side? You get this side in the balcony, okay? And you get that side and uh, jingle them as people put coins in there. Paper money won't make too much of a sound, but it's all welcome. And uh, we'll bring those forward with the offering then. There, jingle them. Jingle them. Make them jingle. Center to the balcony. for the 
and my flesh cry out for the living God. Yea, the sparrow hath found her a house, and the swallow a nest where she may lay her young, even thine own. pray. God of field and forest, sea and sky, you are the giver of all good things. Sustain us with all these gifts of your creation and multiply your graciousness in us that the world may be fed with your love. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. <clears throat> Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. God, our maker, redeemer, and healer, in the harmonious world of your creation, the plants and animals, the seas and stars, were whole and well in your praise. When sin had scarred the world, you sent your Son to heal our ills and to form us again into one. That night in which he was betrayed, Jesus our Lord took bread from the meal. He gave thanks for it, broke it, and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this and eat. This is my body broken for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. 
Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all of them to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his acts of healing, his body given up, and his victory over death, we await that day when all the peoples of the earth will come to the river to enjoy the tree of life. Send your spirit upon us and this meal. As grains scattered on the hillside become one bread, so let your church be gathered from the ends of the earth, that all may be fed with the bread of life, your Son. Through him all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. All people are called to Christ's table. Come, eat what is good. Zion Lutheran practices Eucharistic hospitality. Communing members of all other Christian fellowships are invited to share in this meal of grace today. You may be seated.
Now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. We thank you, generous God, for the refreshment we have received at your banquet table. Send us now to spread your generosity into all the world through the one who is our dearest treasure, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Now may the God who calls across the cosmos and speaks in the smallest seed bless, keep, and sustain you now and to the end of the age. Our closing hymn, O Savior, Precious Savior. 